Welcome to a bonus step for making a top-down adventure game in Pico 8. In this bonus step, we'll add text to the game. This step assumes you have already completed the full tutorial. This step's a bit more complex than the previous steps, which is why it wasn't included in the original tutorial, but I think you'll do fine. If you just started Pico 8, you'll need to load your game. Once it's loaded, hit escape and we'll get started. Remember that extra unused sprite flag number 5? Let's use it for text and dialogue. This is a great addition because it allows you to add characters, life, and story to your game. Since we're now going to use that extra sprite flag number 5, we need to tell our code what sprite flag 5 is for. Go to code tab 1 and we'll add text equals 5 to our list of sprite flags. This means sprite flag 5 will be used for tiles that have text attached to them. The cool thing is that you'll be able to add text to any tile you want in your game. It could be a sign, a character in your game telling you where to go, a message when you pick up a key, anything. Now let's create a new code tab and call it text code. Let's first create a function to set up the text we'll use in our game. We'll call it text setup. First thing we'll do is make a table called texts. We're going to use this table differently than we use the player table, P. In the player table, we named each thing we wanted to store, like P.X or P.Keys and so forth. But in this table, we're just going to make a big list and number the items instead of naming them. If we want to get to an item in the list, we just say which item number we want. But here's the tricky part. We need to match up each piece of text with the specific tile on the map. For instance, if we have a sign at some particular map coordinate, we need a way to store which text goes with that sign at that map coordinate. But since we're storing all the text as just a big numbered list, we need a way to figure out a single item number for each map tile. It turns out this is actually really easy. Let's look at this visually. Let's pretend this is our map and it's 8 tiles wide and 6 tiles tall. As you can see, it's really easy to give each tile its own single number. We just start at the top left and starting at 0, we assign a number to each map tile as we go across, going down to the next row once we get to the end of the row. And there we go, now each map tile has its own specific number. But that's only half the solution. How do we then go from a specific XY coordinate to that map tile's number? For example, if we're given the map coordinate 4, 3, how do we know that coordinate 4, 3 is map tile 20? Well, it turns out there's an easy math trick we can do. If you take the y coordinate and multiply it by the width of the map, then just add the x coordinate, you end up with the map tile's number. Let's try it. For this coordinate, 4, 3, we first multiply the y coordinate, 3, by the width of the map, 8. So now we have 3 times 8, which is 24. And then we just add the x coordinate, which is 4, and now we have 28. And that's the map tile number for that coordinate. So this allows us to refer to any coordinate on the map with just a single number. This means we can store a big list of different texts and just put them at the item number of the map tile where we want that text to go. Then we can also get to those texts by giving a coordinate and getting the text at the corresponding item number. Let's make functions to let us do that. Back in our code, let's add a new function called addText, which takes an xy coordinate and a message to add to that coordinate. Then we have a line that adds that message to our texts table. But we use a math trick to say which item number the message should be stored at. Remember, our map is 128 tiles wide, so that's the width number we're using here for our math trick. The square brackets are how you tell a table to store something by number instead of by name. Now let's make a second function called getText, which just needs an xy coordinate. This function will take the coordinate, convert it into an item number with our math trick, and then return the text at that item number. It should be noted that if we don't have any text at that item number, our code will automatically return nil, which is a special coding term for nothing. Now we have a way to store and get all the texts, so let's make a sign map tile to put some text in our game. Switch to the sprite editor and let's make a sign. Not only will we use our new sprite flag 5, but we'll also mark it as a wall with sprite flag 0 to make sure people can't walk through it. Now let's add a couple signs to our map. Switch to the map editor and place two signs, keeping track of the xy coordinates of where you place them. So one sign is at 1, 3, and the other at 7, 3. Now let's add these two signs to our code. Switch back to code tab 6 and add those two signs to our text setup function by using our new add text function. First, we put the coordinates of the sign, then the text we want. I should note, if you want to tell your text to go to the next line, use slash n in your text and that will tell it to drop to the next line. Now let's make a way to show our text on screen. The way this will work in our game is that we'll have a variable called active text that will store whatever text should be drawn on the screen. But if that variable holds nothing, also called nil, then we don't show text. Let's make a function called draw text. 
First thing we'll do is see if there's any active text to show. If there is, then we should draw it on the screen. Remember the trick we used to figure out where to draw the inventory overlay, where we used map X and map Y to figure out where to start drawing? We'll use the same trick here. We'll draw the text four pixels over and 48 pixels down, which means we'll be drawing sort of near the middle. Then we'll draw a rectangle at that location that is 120 pixels wide and 32 pixels tall and make it white, color seven. Then we'll draw whatever the active text currently has in it at four pixels over and four pixels down from where the rectangle starts. I'm using color one, but remember this is your game, so use whatever colors you want. Then we'll print a line to tell the player how to close the text being shown. You can make the button glyph using Shift O. This glyph represents the button that's activated by pressing either Z on some keyboards or C on other keyboards, or button A on the gamepad. We're not using button X here because we're already using that button to show inventory. Lastly, we need to check and see if the player actually presses that button, and if they do, we should set active text to nil. This way, there won't be any active text to show on the screen anymore. But how does active text get set in the first place? Well, that should happen when we interact with a text tile. So let's go to Code Tab 2 and add some code to our interact function. At the top of the function, we'll check to see if the tile the player is trying to move to is a text tile. If it is, we'll use our getText function to set active text to whatever text is at that XY coordinate. Then we'll let interact check for other types of tiles. Lastly, we need to add some code to our main game loop. So switch over to code tab zero. First, we need to make sure we run our text setup function after we set up our map. Then we need to change our update function. We need to make it so that if the game isn't over, we still update the map, move the player, and check if we win or lose, but only if there's no active text to show. So we'll wrap those three functions in an if statement to make sure they only run if there's no active text. Remember, we don't want the player moving around or the map changing while the text is being shown on the screen. Lastly, we need to add on to our draw function. After we draw the map and the player, we should draw the text. And that's it. Let's test it out. Save the game with Control S and then run it with Control R. If we walk over to the sign, we should be able to read it. It works. Let's check the other sign. That works too. And notice the slash N made it go to the next line. So at this point, we have a way to add text to our game. We just make a tile that has Sprite Flag 5 turned on and then add that location and message to our text setup function. But I want to caution you against something. I'll show you as I do this. Go to your map editor. If you add Sprite Flag 5 to something that is not a wall, you have to be careful. For example, let's add text to this fancy grass tile and this key. Both of these are not walls, so we can walk right over them. Note the positions of the fancy grass tile and the key. 1, 1, and 8, 1. Now we'll go to the sprite editor and add sprite flag 5 to both the fancy grass and key tiles. Since fancy grass and keys now have sprite flag 5, we can add text for those two positions. Go back to code tab 6 and we'll add text for those two positions. Now run the game with control R. When we walk up to the fancy grass, we get the text, but now we're stuck, we can't get away. That's because as soon as we close the text, 1 30th of a second later, it looks and sees you're at a fancy grass tile with text and shows it again. So unless you can close the text and move away in a 30th of a second, you're stuck there, always being shown text. So let's see if that happens with the key. Okay, we got the text, but now we can just close it and walk away. Why did that work? Well, if you remember, the key sprite has flag 5 turned on. The grass that the key gets replaced with after we pick it up does not have flag 5 turned on. So when we first walk into the key, it shows the text, but it also immediately replaces the ground underneath us with a non-text sprite tile. So after we close the text, we can move on our way. There are ways to prevent this problem from coming up, but they require a lot more code and would have doubled the length of this video, which is long enough already. In the meantime, you just have to be careful about how you place text on sprite tiles that you can walk through. Enjoy adding text to your game. Thank you for watching.